All right, guys, officially day four, minus a few hours that I spent during the week, but you know, Saturday, officially day four. Let's go. So, brother, a couple reminders for myself, just big important stuff that I don't want to forget. Need to do the flex plate anchor bolts. Uh, need to use thread sealant on some of the block studs. I'll tell you guys about that once we get there. Big shout out to Jixer on 500 e board, Dave. Really appreciate you, man. You, like, you're a wizard. You, Everything that I have a question about, you have an answer for most of the time. So thank you so much. Um, measure for shifter so I can cut down this rod that we've started to assemble. And then I'm thinking about doing something for just strapping down engine mount or creating um, what they call like a torque strap. Because, yeah, I figured it might be a good idea. But anyways, that's just a question mark. Um, right now, I left the interior in bits and pieces when I left yesterday uh, so I will start to kind of put that back together as much as I can and then I want to cut out the hole for the shifter get the shifter mounted because I got the right hardware now and then yeah go from there so I will update you guys as we're going through of course like always and let you know what kind of progress we're making I'm hoping by the end of the day we can, I'll get the shifter thing taken care of. We can get the transmission out and get the flywheel and clutch actually mounted, like for real, for real. Um, and then maybe do a test start. I don't know, but we'll see. See how far we get. All right, guys, quick update for you. Pedal is out and the clutch pedal is about to go in. Um, it's always kind of a pain doing that because you have to contort your body around here and try to lift up but I was trying to just do things somewhat uh, blind so I didn't have to contort myself too much but yeah there's four studs there um, on the brake booster and then there's one bolt that goes up at the top so there's the four nuts they're all 13 millimeter uh, and then there is a spring that is a return spring for the brake pedal and I gotta figure out where it attaches to. It fell down, so I gotta figure out where it attaches to uh, up here. But uh, besides that, yeah, that hooks into the brake pedal. And then there is a pin and uh, like kind of cotter pin that goes on to the uh, hole on the actual brake pedal shaft right here. Same on the automatic right here and that just holds it in place with the brake booster. So I'll have to attach that once I get everything bolted back up. So I'll check in with you guys in a second. All right, real quick for the back of the uh, clutch slave cylinder, there is a spot for a basically barb fitting. So I just put this one in. This is a 5 16th, I believe. So I'm gonna connect this up to the remote wood reservoir that I got. Um, I'll mount this somewhere underneath where the pedals are. And then it comes with pretty much everything you need. So yeah, get the pedals in soon. All right guys, well, we got a bit sidetracked. Uh, I haven't put this in yet. I'm waiting, everything's ready, but I just haven't. But look what we do have. The Jacksonville Racing Shifter is in the car and we can roll through gears. And reverse, there we go. So I'll have to uh, adjust the pins obviously so I can, right now I can go super far left and super far right, but first is really like right there. So basically you just Adjust these so that it stops on the uh, middle pin right there at first. So no matter what, you can't go past that. And then that way, when you use the button on top and release that pin, that allows you to go further and down into reverse. So just adjustments, but obviously we're pulling trans out again and figuring out the exact shifter, but let me show you guys what we have down below for now. All right, so using that rod, 
uh, we ended up threading the other side, obviously, putting on the heim joints and fixing it to the transmission, like so. Um, basically, we're gonna end up most likely welding the pivots on the joints themselves. But uh, yeah, the way it is right now, it's working. So we just need to kind of lock it in um, fully once we're ready. But yeah, this is what it looks like. The nicest part about all this, shift rod cost me, I don't know, $10 in parts, probably less than that. And we got a lot of stuff left over in case we need to mock up anything else or use in the future. So, yep, pretty cool. And like I said, I have the pedal ready to go. Got the, uh, what's called, barb fitting hose ready to go. This will end up plugging in here. So yeah, I'll uh, bolt this up. We're gonna go get some food right now and then uh, come back and take care of the pedals today. What's up, Hannah? All right, guys, we're back from lunch. Um, not gonna do what I had originally intended to do in the morning. Just because we don't have the dry shaft yet and we're still mocking stuff up based on where the transmission is at right now. So there's no point in dropping it and putting this stuff in yet. It's just, yeah, we can do that on the day that we have the drive shaft. So last thing I'm going to do right now before I head out today is put the pedals in and maybe uh, kind of mock up where I think this is going to go. I'll see if I can find easy good location for that to sit um, like I said I'm gonna have it sit inside of the cabin just to make it easy but um, I want to make sure it's easy and not just you know putting it there to put it there I want it to be in a good spot so we'll see what we can do but yeah anyways I'm gonna do this real quick and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's in there all right guys well the clutch pedal was in and then I realized our remote reservoir idea is not gonna work this is just sitting up way higher than I thought it would. So there's no way uh, for me to mount the remote reservoir in here and get it to gravity feed. So I'm just going to use the given opening to go into the firewall. I'll run this line in there and then we can either tap into the brake reservoir or uh, see if we can use the remote mount uh, in there. It doesn't seem hopeful though. I'm probably going to have to use a brake reservoir. But real quick, I'm gonna find a grommet that can fit into that hole so I'm not rubbing against uh, metal with this rubber line. All right, guys, we got three pedals and uh, I told you how many times I had to take these in and out right now. My God, man, I think I had to take them out like, first, first time it went in smoothly, but then I realized, oh, this clutch reservoir is not gonna work. Took them out, put it back in, Put the grommet and all that stuff in then i realized the brake booster was not aligned with the brake pedal it was to the left and everything was tightened down and i could not get it back into place then i had to undo it put it back into place finally i don't know if it was the third time or fourth time was the charm everything is in the cotter pin is in return spring is in yeah everything is good Got that, got brakes. So no uh, line on the clutch cylinder yet, but we will uh, be doing that next time I'm over here. So plenty of room to work for that. And uh, the transmission soft line actually comes through here. Like it can sit in the cabin if I wanted it to. So I'll probably do that. And uh, I still have the grommet for right there. So we're good, but yeah. Um, Today, like the other days, was a lot of little stuff, but a lot of detail-oriented work that needs to be done, that got done, thankfully. So we're still waiting on the drive shaft. I think I told you guys I dropped it off on Friday to a shop that can hopefully do it, but I won't have an answer really until Monday. So project's somewhat on hiatus um, until we know that we have the drive shaft for sure. If I don't, then I'm going to have to start reaching out to some other sources and see what to do. But uh, fingers crossed on that one. The journey continues. I will see you guys on the next day, whether it's tomorrow or some other day. So, yeah, check with you guys later. All right, one more clip, guys, before I left. I realized I didn't even sit in it and see how this feels. And, man, this feels so sick. <laughs> 
Wow, okay, this made all the struggles today worth it. I'm over here dead tired right now. But man, this is really good positioning. I'm really happy with where we mounted the shifter. The pedals feel great. This is like almost better positioning than the C55 is. Oh man, this is so cool. So cool. <laughs> it feels like I'm in a monster truck right now because we're so high off the ground on the blocks. But dude, this is sick. All right, guys. Hopefully that keeps you motivated to keep watching. See you soon. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. It is now day five, I believe, officially. Didn't work yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday. Today is Sunday. Uh, I think this is our third or fourth week working now on the car, but our fifth day overall. So a lot of stuff to do today. Need to pull the trans out. Need to get the flywheel and everything all officially put in. I don't think I updated you guys in the video yet, but I did find a place that took on the drive shaft job, thankfully. Um, so big shout out to Driving Lights Northwest and Everett. Um, that is being made. It's supposed to be ready tomorrow. So we'll see. Uh, so basically my plan is today, uh, Mike and I will try to get the car all the way ready as far as we can. And then that way we can just kind of slip fit the drive shaft as the last step. And then uh, we'll probably have to make the uh, trans mount once we do that too but yeah we'll see we're gonna try to get as much as we can done today so that it can kind of just be the last few things once we get the drive shaft so a couple little updates um i don't think i showed you guys these either but at work i was able to use our little hydraulic press and make these into solid heim joints instead of um like they are here you know spherical kind of fully rotating heim joint not the best thing for you know wanting to shift and not have this move all different directions so instead of using all the washers we were using this is a much better solution um, still allows this movement but will not allow left and right movement so i wasn't able to um, go to my work yesterday to do the other one and these were at my parents house so i'm going to try to just use the vice right now to uh, pop this out and use a combination of sockets like I did at work to uh, yeah press in the other side so we have two of these and can use them officially. Uh, other random thing, grab some uh, thread sealant for the two uh, dowel pins that we took out that I think are going to be bolts now but will still need to be um, sealed. Uh, I did get the uh, slave cylinder and oh big thing so let's talk about this real quick. I want to give a huge shout out to Creative Steel. Those of you guys that don't know, they are a uh, parts producer uh, over in Oregon. And they specialize mainly in like kind of uh, more race applications or drag applications. But they have some really cool mounts for Mercedes and engine mounts. And you guys have seen me use their products a lot in previous videos. And I always vouch for this company number one because the products are just outstanding uh, quality and performance wise number two they have the best customer service that i've experienced with anything like this um, and just they're just cool people and uh, they helped out with this build so this is their version two of their trans mount so i have the version one in the c55 you guys saw recently when i just uh, threw in a stiffer bushing that they sent out but um, this one, I asked them to fill it with uh, 75A, which is what I have in the C55 now. And that's just because the manual transmission has a tendency to move a little more. So this will kind of lock it in place and uh, hold it a little tighter than I think they use a 60A, if I remember correctly, for like the automatics. I never had an issue with it when I was using 60A on the automatic before I manual swapped but uh, definitely helped out putting a stiffer durometer after the manual swap in the C55. So yeah, this is version two of their mount. The biggest difference is you can see these are two separated pieces now where before it was all one housing and they used a C-clip as kind of the retainer with a washer to hold the bushing on one side. Now they're using this entire piece uh, that's bolted to the main piece over here um, as the anchor to hold in the bushing. So the biggest reason they did that from what they told me was makes changing the bushing out and just servicing a lot easier. 
um, cause it was, yeah, I mean, not crazy difficult, but it was a little tricky getting that C clip and getting everything positioned correctly how it's supposed to be. So on the bottom, regular, just like Mercedes, three holes on one side and one hole the other. Um, and everything else is pretty much the same. So, uh, really cool little laser etched logo right there. But yeah, thank you guys again. Um, Josh, shout out you for helping every time I have like a weird Mercedes question or just questions about what you guys got for Mercedes stuff. He's kind of their Mercedes specialist. So yeah, huge shout out Josh. Thank you. And uh, definitely go check them out. I tell you guys every time I get a chance to, fantastic company, fantastic products, fantastic people, definitely go support them. So yeah, real quick, uh, I'm just gonna try to press this out. Like I said, using the vise and using a couple different combinations of sockets. All right, there it is. Just use a combination, had this sitting on this side, had this pushing on the bushing on this side, and yeah, basically just squeezed down the vise, popped it out. This is what it looks like without it. And here are the bearings. So I decided to use two, they're six millimeters wide, fill up this void and kind of flatten this out a little bit. All right guys, one small victory to start the day. Now I have two of these. So we should be good as far as the shifter goes. All right, so one other thing that I left off with before I uh, got back today was our clutch reservoir. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do um, last time when I was messing with this, but I think in the end, uh, I'm just gonna use this. Still, I'm just not gonna be able to mount it um, using the mounting tabs that they give you here. It'll pretty much just be kind of rehanging, or I might make some type of a Velcro attachment to um, the fuse box right here on the side. This does have some good area to grip right there. So it's not like this thing is going to be flying around or anything like that. So it, it should be fine, uh, even if I just secure it with, you know, some zip ties and uh, some either double sided tape or Velcro or whatnot. But um, I don't need to bolt this in anywhere I would have liked to, but it's not the end of the world um, not being able to bolt it somewhere. All right, guys, quick little update. I just finished putting on the ball bearing modified, or modified little shifter joints and feels a lot better. I'll show you guys shifting up top in a second, but it also is a lot cleaner down here. Don't have to use all those uh, combinations of washers. So just some washers on each side for the bolts and the nuts. And basically it's at, I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but it's just off angle a tiny bit. There's like a slight bend in the tube that lets it be off angle like that. So that's what it looks like under here. And I'll show you up top how it shifts. All right, here's, I believe it's a neutral right now. Yeah, so there's third and fourth. First and second, fifth and sixth, and then here is reverse. And I actually took this top piece off. I'm gonna take it to work and do a little laser engraving on top. So it's off right now, but yeah, much better than it was. All right, update on the uh, clutch fluid reservoir as well. The line is kind of non-permanently plumbed right now and hooked onto it. Uh, Mike said might be able to make a little bracket right up here. So it might be a good idea for us to try make something that attaches right here and then can bolt into the little plastic bolt hole location. So that'll mount it right there. Right now, Mike's working on the hard line for the uh, pedal to the trans. Right there is the rubber trans lines coming through. And he's flaring it up right now. <laughs> yeah, so the line doesn't need to be that long, but uh, just figuring out where it's all going to be situated. This is the little kit that he's using. I've never flared lines like this before, so I'll ask Mike, he can explain the process, but yeah. One a little more job done here in a bit, hopefully. And then we'll start uh, pulling the trans again. 
All right, guys, another quick update. Uh, pulled the trans out again. We just had a few bolts anchoring it. We need to finish notching this side. Um, I pulled off the clutch master cylinder. Um, I'll wait to put the new one on until we do this, just to clean up the shavings first. Uh, but there's four, what are they, E, E10 maybe? Yeah, E10 bolts that hold on the clutch master cylinder. One right here, one right here, one here, and then one down there. Uh, they're all the same lengths. You don't need to worry about which one goes where. And then when you're pulling the uh, combination line, the hard line, rubber line, there's a little clip that holds it in to the um, arm on the actual clutch master cylinder. So here's the old one. Not terrible, but uh, I have a new one, so might as well use it. Oh, yeah. So the difference between the old one and the new one, much harder to push down and much smoother overall. All right now Mike is anchoring down the uh, flex plate bolts. We're doing this like I talked about earlier, so it's not just being held on by the dowels. So I'm just going around and found some hardware store stuff that fit pretty well. And luckily there's still a good amount of space behind the uh, flywheel, so. All right guys, a little update. We were able to pop the flywheel off. It was just basically kind of heat cured on the last little edge and on the dowel, so it wasn't popping off, but Mike got it off, almost took his head off, but uh, <laughs> uh, we found out the bolts that I had, which I thought when I was at the store were a little too long. So I gotta trim these down and then I'll go ahead and anchor this up. It'll be a lot easier to do since it's out of the car now. So yeah, shorten up your bolts. All right guys, we just got done cutting out uh, our release for the crank position sensor. Um, like I said earlier in the video, uh, or maybe in another part, what you're watching, um, I talked to uh, Petya, the guy from Kangaroo's team, and they used to actually design them like this, but customers complained that, you know, it doesn't look like a complete piece or whatever, so that's when they started putting the arch in there. But having that arch in there, it doesn't allow you for serviceability of the crank position sensor. If it ever goes bad, you can't pull it out without pulling the trans, basically. So, um yeah we decided to do this make things easier still plenty strong this is very very thick stuff took us some force and me standing on it to cut through it so it's definitely strong enough to be fine without that little bridge right there um i'm still cutting down the bolts i'm on the last one right now just filing it down and then i'll anchor that in and yeah pretty soon we'll be able to bolt this up all right guys this part is done just got done bolting down all six of the bolts put thread locker on them and their lock nuts as well so should be pretty secure we'll go ahead and throw this back in all right transmission's notched clutch safe cylinder a new one is in there and this is notched up line is on everything else is good so just put the flywheel or the flex plate back on now we'll start doing the flywheel after we get the uh adapter and all that good stuff but there it sits right now update you as we move forward all right guys this is where we're at we got the adapter plate on and the crank position sensor on and we're just about to start tightening down the flywheel flywheel is 100 newton meters there's eight bolts and they also recommended using loctite all right guys i am uh cutting down the flywheel bolts right now unfortunately they were a little bit too long uh, you can see the comparison of the one that came with the kit compared to how far we're trimming it down. A little more than, I don't know, a little over a quarter inch. Um, this is the, whoops, whoops, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this is the factory bolt. Um, so that's how it looks like compared to that. Let me turn this music off so I don't get copyrighted. Um, but yeah, this is the factory bolt right there so we just thread these in see where they start to catch uh, where they bottomed out and uh, kind of made some adjustments from there we put some ink on the end of the first one we tested 
to make sure it wasn't hitting um and yeah we figured it out so i got uh six more to go all right guys all eight are complete we're gonna go uh take a lunch break mike's getting fancy on us What's that? <laughs> said you're getting fancy on us this is one of mike's cars 40 ford pretty cool it's got a 302 right is it still a 302 347 now is it bored out yeah is that what it starts as all right starts as a 302 yeah from a 50 old fox body so what transmission's in it c4 c4 that's what i thought c4 automatic it's pretty good looking so i don't think i've ever driven in this car actually so try it out See what this is all about. <laughs> Got nice. It's not the Camaro. Nice <laughs> lap belt. <laughs> all right, three sandwiches and a watermelon later. Alright guys, just got done with lunch. Just hit my head on a ladder. Um, I think we're gonna call it here today. Still got quite a bit to go, so it's no point in trying to burn it out today. It's already 4.30. Got all the bolts taken care of at least. Flywheel doesn't take long to actually bolt it up when we do. Um, so yeah, we made a lot of progress today though, actually. Um, shifter is all good to go. Um, the shift link and made all the cuts that we had remaining for the adapter plate and transmission got the adapter on figured out the flywheel yeah we're we're looking good so hopefully the drive shaft shop will call me tomorrow and we'll be able to pick that up maybe tuesday and that will be our last piece that we need that we don't have here uh so maybe a uh, day this week i can come try to knock some of this stuff out I'm also gonna to try to find a clutch tool for the clutch. We don't have one. I have one that we kind of work for the C55. It's not a perfect fit, so we'll use that if anything, but I'm gonna look around the line and see if I can find a uh, 26 spline correct clutch tool, or maybe like a universal kit or something like that. So anyways, me and my watermelon are gonna go home now. My son asked for this, so <laughs> picked it up at the store while we were grabbing lunch. But yeah, that's the end of day five's progress. I will uh, catch you on the next part of this adventure.